Hello and welcome to Hopeful Conversations. I am Vicky Montague and today I'm joined by Lucy Sheffield. Hello Lucy. Good morning, how are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. And Lucy is currently surrounded by beautiful artwork. I'm just going to point this out before we, join, before we start the conversation. Uh, Lucy is an um, amazing artist who I admire greatly and uh, you'll see some of her work in the background so if you're interested in any of her stuff I'm sure she'll tell us about it at the end hopefully and where we can find it and buy it and love it <laughs> but that's not what we're going to talk about today right <laughs> right but it's not very often that I don't come up with uh, the word art in whatever yeah. I do <laughs> yeah. well I thought that it would be a really lovely um episode to have you on because I don't know a huge amount about you um but I do know that you had a lot of struggles with alcohol and yeah. and I know that you no longer have those struggles with alcohol and so um yeah, I'm going to hand over to you. I'm not going to waffle on, on any more. I'd love to just hear more about, you know, going back, what, what, where you used to be, I suppose, and what happened. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, sure. This is great. This is great timing as well, Vicky, because I was literally just saying to you before we started, we were on our, uh, we were in retreats here in North Devon as well. And we were just on a retreat weekend. And I was talking a lot about this over the weekend because we were brought up in a religion and there was a few people on our retreat that we'd all kind of come from a religious background and we were talking so much about it and you know there's so much to my story I don't even know how far to go back and where to start but we ended up talking about my sexuality as well and going right back to that from when I was 15 when I fell in love with a woman uh, my teacher and how that wasn't allowed because of the religion and I can see where it wow. all started stemmed from right back when I was probably younger than that but that was when I first remember where it got difficult and and this is kind of relevant actually because that is where it all started where I felt like I needed to be somebody else and I was told through the religion that we need to do this and we need to do that and we can't do this and we can't do that and everything inside of me which I now see as my wisdom was screaming no like no don't tell me what to do I know my own like stuff I know how to live my life and, and how I can be me so right back from that very first moment when I left in fact I think I left the religion when I was about 13 right um, and I started turning to drink I think when I was 14 or 15, I started going out with older mates and clubbing and drinking. And a huge part of that was to feel normal, um, to drink and to, to sleep with men. Like I'm being completely <laughs> honest and vulnerable here, yeah. vulnerable here um, so that I could feel normal. Wow. Because I'd been taught that that's what I had to do. And I didn't know how to settle down and have a family and and be with men because it didn't feel right for me yeah what was going on yeah. inside me. yeah like, yeah so so that's where I can see where the drinking looked like a good idea because yeah. once I'd <laughs> once I'd experienced going out with my friends and I felt relaxed and confident and all these things and I I would literally sleep with a different man every week if if I pulled when I was out yeah. it's really weird to talk about this like <laughs> Because it just doesn't feel like me at all. Yeah. Um, but that's where the journey started with the alcohol because, and because my attachment was already there, like, oh my God, this makes me be able to do life right. When I drink, I can do life right. I'm good. I'm a good person. And it right. I'm I'm doing what I should be doing. I'm I'm sleeping with men. That's what I should do, right? <laughs> um. So all of that was going on for me and it just became then it looked like oh this is easier when I drink oh look I can be more free and more relaxed I can be confident I can be the person that people expect me to be and the cycle just went on and I don't think I even noticed it it was just so habitual um and I got to points in my life where I wouldn't do anything socially without a drink um but I started being, I was in a relationship in my, there's so much more, but we don't need to talk about loads of that because <laughs> it was so forever. But, but eventually in my late twenties, um, I met a woman, settled down, we lived together. Um, 
we were together about seven years, I think. Um, but about two or three years in, I realised that I was horrible. <laughs> when I drank, I was really, really um, mentally abusive. Is that the right word? Like, right. I'd drink and just say horrible things to her. Mm. But I knew, I had a little bit of awareness of like, I don't want to be that person. She doesn't deserve it. She's a nice woman. We'd got a really nice relationship other than me doing that. Um, so I didn't like the person I was. And that's when I became curious. And this was when I was about 30. So 10 years ago. Um, and my auntie had come across the principles, Deb. Uh, I didn't know at the time, but I'd seen her change. And I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> So I knocked her door, like she lived down here in North Devon. I was up in the Midlands then with my partner at the time. And we came down on holiday for a weekend because I was like, oh, Auntie Deb's so cool. We went to visit her and I was like, what is, like, why are you so happy or what, what is it? <laughs> She'd been through an abusive marriage. She'd left, had to live in a women's refuge with the kids. I'd seen all that and I just didn't know what had gone on and how come she was just all right when all that shit had happened, you know? So I was just suspicious and I wanted a piece of it. So I kind of said to her, like, I, I just remember her talking about thought or something and had no clue about thought at all. And we started having regular conversations. Um, but that's 10 years ago. And for the next eight years, I carried on drinking. But I came to her because I wanted to stop being abusive to my partner. I didn't want to be that person and so many things dropped away from me Vicky um but the drink it looked I mean the best way I can describe it is it looked like a solid brick wall and there was no way through mm. there was no way over there was no way round it just wasn't no it was a no it was a no I couldn't I tried to visualize my life without the drinking I try to go yeah yeah you can Lou but it just it just I just couldn't I just couldn't but because I changed in so many other ways and and so many other areas when I did drink I stopped being abusive to my partner I stopped being horrible to her so for me I was like oh well that's all right then and it, it was like it was a level of betterness if you like and all rightness um fast forward I guess we split up anyway um and then I moved down to North Devon to carry on to run like a business actually with my auntie and sister we wanted to share the principles and, and do more around that um and that wasn't working for me and I was I was really struggling with the change and moving down here and I was still drinking. I think there was a period where my drinking got a lot less and I began to drink a lot less and not, not rely on it so much. And then I think after me and Michaela split up, I noticed it spiraled down again and I went back to drinking more heavily, relying on it. And I didn't have anything else, especially now I'd lost her, if you like. That's how it looked. I'd lost her and it was a struggle. So, yeah, but then... Oh God, it's just over two years now. And I think I've been finding my feet more and more as, as I've moved down here. Um, I struggled a lot with depression and that kind of thing. Um, there was something in me, what actually happened was, it was two years ago in January, I was in a relationship with a woman and we'd been together about five months. And I saw how petrified I was um, of sleeping with her without drinking. Mm -hmm. I'd got myself in such a pickle of not being confident in the bedroom and not being good enough. Um, and all these expectations as a lesbian <laughs> that were, I mean, it looks funny now, it really does, but <laughs> it was so, it was so scary. And I every time my mind said, no, 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 you've been with her long enough now, Lou. You're fine. Stop being silly. You can sleep with her quick get a bottle of wine <laughs> and and I just couldn't and I really see Vicky it was nothing to do with her it was everything to do with me mm. and I just got myself into such a, a rut with it again and I thought to myself I need to explore this drinking something came up for me I remember having the conversation with my sister and I 
I had to admit it to myself first. Then I was like, can I say this out loud to Beck? Can I tell her about my how scared I am of having sex, sober sex, as I call it these days? Um, and saying that out loud to her was the first, the first, like, I don't know, me putting it out there to the universe, if you like. And I kind of knew, Vicky, that it was going to be a, if I'm going to stop this drinking, I can't be in this relationship with this woman. I, I just, I knew that in the back of my mind somewhere, I've, I've got to do me or do her, if you like. And, and it was like, what actually happened for me, she ended up cheating on me. And it was really, really strange because I've never been cheated on before that I know of. And right when it happened, I actually saw the gift of it. It was wow. really bizarre. While I was going through it and feeling sorry for myself at the same time, and she shouldn't have done that, I couldn't buy into that story. I was really, really like, actually, this this is thank you. Like, I was so grateful to her. And, and it was a couple of weeks of torment, but we literally met up to talk about things. Um, and I went home that night, sunk a bottle of wine after meeting up with her. And I stopped drinking the next day. <laughs> um, yeah. And I saw it as, wow, she's given me the space that I need to be me, to concentrate on me, to work out who I am, to really do this thing and understand me um, and see the perfection of me as sober. Wow. So that's the start of it. <laughs> so how, I mean, for anybody listening that struggles with alcohol, how do you, you know, how, how did that, I mean, it sounds like a switch almost. Like it sounds like, you know, right, yeah, I had a last bottle of wine and that was it. How, what, what sort of, what do you interpret? Or what do you see as having happened? To me, I feel like I did eight years of, understanding myself in so many ways that I hadn't before that that was like the groundwork and the foundations to to that being able to happen at the time that it did um, but I've also experienced other things that have shifted for me overnight like that anyway and and it was it was that quick in a way but it was also like I'd been exploring that in my mind for so long there'd been so many times when my head said come on Lou let's give up the drinking over those eight years mm. and I wasn't ready until I was ready I, I'm not sure how else to say that but yeah you know there the was there was a period of time from about November to January where I was going I'm ready for this I'm ready for this I'm ready for this come on catch up universe I'm ready for this um and I decided to do a 30-day journey with a woman called Annie Grace who I would highly recommend if it's your thing because she marketed it as as an, an experiment and I love to explore life I don't love to think it's got to be this way or I've mm. got to do this and the way she explained it as an experiment and you couldn't fail I'm like I'm in I'm in if I can't fail yeah um, yeah what's really interesting I think about what you've described is and we both know, obviously, that, cha that change happens, can happen in a moment. It's just it, all it is, is is a different thought yeah. or, a, or, a, or a release of a belief that we see as no longer being that True. valid, I guess. Yeah. And, and like, you know, you talked about right back in your teen years, having this set up that alcohol, you needed to have alcohol in order to be normal or OK. Correct. Normal. <laughs> And I guess uh, from what, you know, I'm just kind of making an assumption, but something during that period of eight years, your, your journey of kind of seeing more and more about yourself, mm -hmm. there was a seeing that 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 was just a, that was a, that was a thought <laughs> it was a belief that you held. But that a belief is a thought, right? It's just a really solid looking one. Absolutely. And that I mean, that's it's it sounds so simple and straightforward and like, oh yeah, right. Okay. So I just stop. So I just stop thinking the thoughts that I have, but, 
but we don't see them, do we? And, and I'm I'm curious to know, like, did you see that you had that this sort of a lot of thinking about alcohol and being required for X, Y, and Z, or you know, was that, or did it just literally just disappear without? No, I would say I saw it, um, and I would, in my words, I would say I was bullshitting myself. I knew for quite a while that I would pretend I was pretending I was like it's okay my drinking's fine I'm not hurting anyone because I'd had the story of um not wanting to be abusive to my ex anymore mm -hmm. and I'd gone and I'd stopped that and I was drinking from an okay place you know I wasn't I wasn't drinking because I felt I felt so much anger and frustration when I was younger and that's what would come out when I drank and I was abusive to my ex so now that I'd learned the principles and understood so much over those eight years, the drinking was, it was more habitual and it was more boredom and it was more, this is what Lou does. This is Lou. This is who I am. I'm the life and the soul. I drink, I'm fern, I'm, I'm normal. Um, and there was so much story tied up there that I couldn't, I can see now that I was bullshitting myself, but I don't know if I could while I was in it. I don't know if I could see that I was pretending. It's a, it's a weird one because I can see that I knew I was, but I don't know if I could see while I was in it. No. But I definitely was a... Our mind is so clever. Mm. It's so clever and it comes dressed up as, I'm not thought, this is different. <laughs> Doesn't it, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And it was that that was going, no, you, you, you know, the principles, you're drinking from a great headspace. You're, you're amazing, Lou. It's fine. You, you can yes. hold it. And, and I have to say, there is a huge part of me that thinks testament to what I had learned and what I do know that the way I was functioning as, as an alcoholic, if you want to call it that, I don't really call it that. I don't, I don't quite see it like that, but the way I was functioning and the way, you know, my body was and everything was, is incredible to what I was doing and what I was putting myself through you know but the clarity and the difference from now I don't drink is like what the fuck <laughs> yeah but I think that's a really that's a really key point to pull out that even in our most destructive behaviors like even when we're doing stuff that to the outside world looks like it's a crazy thing to do that that this greater intelligence, universal intelligence, whatever you want to call it, is still is still driving everything. Like it doesn't, it may not look, it may not have looked intelligent to people out there when you were a teenager and you were drinking and sleeping with men all the time. But actually, when you when you look at it was incredibly intelligent. You know, the fact that you turned to alcohol in order to, you know, settle your mind so that you could then do something that didn't feel that was in alignment with what you knew to be true for you. Yeah. Like, oh my God, the perfection, it's incredible. Like you say, just the, it's just so beautiful how that, how when we get eyes for the fact that we are universal intelligence, that you see it everywhere, even in the things that would be judged as not being. Yeah, yeah, I love that, Vicky, because so many people like, you know, when I do, I tell my story a lot. I'm, I'm quite open and quite mm. happy to be vulnerable and share. Um, and I do get a lot of people that say, "Oh no, I'm sorry that you went through that." I'm like, "What? <laughs> no way! Like, it's amazing. It and genuinely, like, I." you know it's quite easy to say oh no you know I'm where I am today because of da 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 but I genuinely mean that like I've been through so much and I'm so grateful for that because literally look where I am today I've got tears now Vicky <laughs> um it is that it is that we go through that so that we can grow and blossom into the person that we're meant to be and sometimes that takes quite a long journey you know I used to have I used to have a lot of thinking of like for god's sake Lou you're 40 now and you've only just started growing up and not drinking and and we can use that again and beat ourselves up or I can use it as 
how inspiring and impactful I can be now to help others to see to see what their journey is and and share my story you know yeah and I think also you know what you're saying there about the sort of struggles that we all experience in whatever way you know whatever way it comes life is a contact sport as Sid Banks would have said you know yeah. we get we get stuff thrown at us and I think what I'm really beginning to see is that that all of that stuff like how we respond to that just shows us what our beliefs are it shows us what we've acquired over the years what the conditioning is what the it, you know what we've taken from experiences that's all it's showing us but it's making it it's giving it to us on a plate it's showing us that but it, that isn't who we are and that's sort of what you were describing is like you know you got that you you were kind of given that gift as it were i love the word gift yeah but you and you took the opportunity to see that for what it was and 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 you know it, it laid bare almost the the beliefs and all that stuff that had been acquired that wasn't who you are and that now you can kind of live from a place of connection i guess to who you really are not this made up idea of lou who's insecure and can't it has to drink and must sleep with men because otherwise she wouldn't fit in and you know all of that stuff i just think it just yeah. laid that out for you yeah absolutely and um i think what i see as well is i've always questioned things and that's what wasn't right for me when i was younger i couldn't and that's where i see the wisdom it's like i can't just do what people tell me to do because <laughs> I've known from the age of 13 or probably younger that I've got my own wisdom and and I don't want you to tell me what to do. I, I'm happy to look like nowadays, I'd happily look at the religion and decide whether it's for me or not. I'd look at drinking and decide whether it's for me or not. And actually, while we're on that subject and I've not spoke about this very much um, publicly yet, but here goes. So with my drinking, what happened for me was I knew that I needed a period of time completely away from the drinking. So for 18 months, I did not touch a drop of alcohol. Um, within the last, where are we? February, March? Yeah, right. Eight months, I think. Um, I've been experimenting and having a drink. And I do have a drink now and again. I hardly, hardly touch it because... I'm, I'm just not in that place but to me I was like hang on a minute I'm still for me personally I'm still out of balance here mm. I needed that period to not drink and that was right for me but actually what I always wanted was to be able to drink here we go you're gonna love this on Vicky to be able to drink like a normal person <laughs> 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 whatever that means but I really wanted to what I see that this exploration is all about and not just with the alcohol is finding that place of having a healthy relationship with alcohol. And that starts with having a healthy relationship with me. Mm. That was my exploration and my journey. And I get scared. I get nervous sometimes. And when I first had a drink and that, I was like, oh my God, what if I slip back in? What if this, what if that? Mm. But I also thought, Lou, what if you trust yourself? You can trust yourself. You are very different to how you were. And I prefer to have the choice and make the choice every day, whether I want a drink or not. And I go out for meals and I went out for a meal last week, a couple of times. And I was like, let's have a ginger beer, please. I'll just have a glass of water. And I went out for my 40th birthday and had a pink gin, you know, and that was in October last year. I think I had a books fizz on Christmas day as well but the difference Vicky is I'm doing it because I want to just have that little drink like I would have a dessert it's not coming from oh god I feel uncomfortable I feel bored I don't know what to do with myself I need to get pissed blah 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 it's so different yeah it's so I can hear that difference I mean it's like yeah on one hand there's the there's the buying into the story of um I need alcohol in order to be okay, basically. <laughs> and then seeing that, oh, that's a story that I don't need to hold on to anymore. It doesn't serve me. Mm -hmm. And 
yeah, I can have a glass of alcohol if I feel like it. Like there's nothing yeah. on it, is there? There's no, there's no, it's just lightness. It's just whether yeah. I have one or not. Yeah, I'm really, I, yeah. And most of the time I choose not to because, because I don't, <laughs> the funny thing is I used to drink wine and I'd mix it with lemonade because I didn't like the bloody taste of it. So I'd mix lemonade in it so it tasted nice, but it was the thing that got me pissed the quickest. Um, and I've never touched wine at all since yeah. I've been with having a drink because I guess maybe maybe there's a part of me that still associates that with getting pissed, but I'm also like, you don't like that, Lou, and we're not drinking to get pissed. We're drinking because we like it. And I like a pink gin, mm -hmm. so I have a pink gin. And I literally have one, and I'm like, my head says... I, I kind of talk to myself, Vicky. I'm like, yeah. Lou, do we want another one? And I, I kind of go inside and I really feel into that. And I'm like, do I or don't I? No, I've had enough, thanks. I love that. Can I, I just really want to pick up on that because that's so, you know, when it comes to like, it's just it, like habits. So for me, I can quite easily, if, there, if there's chocolate in the house, I can just yeah. literally go and I'm like, my head is going, there's chocolate, there's chocolate in that cupboard, there's chocolate in the cupboard, eat the chocolate, eat the chocolate. Like could be going... And I cannot, you know, it's almost like an, um, it's almost like I just do it because there's that, that instruction as it were. But like you say, that what's, what is a complete game changer is to see, oh, hang on a minute. There's that voice that isn't who I am. Do I have to listen to it? Do I have to believe it? Does it, is it true? No. And, and like you say, it's almost like ch that checking in, that stopping, or do I want another piece of chocolate? Does my body want another piece of chocolate? And that little gap means that you get to choose. And that's what I experience now, exactly the same. I mean, chocolate doesn't, that doesn't happen for me, but what happened for me was the same with the alcohol. It'd be yeah. like, just so fast. And yeah. one of the things I've been exploring lately, Vicky, is my feelings of urgency around things and how yesterday was a great example I I felt really overwhelmed and really emotional um and I felt like I had so much to do and it took all my strength because what I wanted to do and bear with me while while I embrace my weirdness here I wanted to just lie on the floor I bloody love lying on the floor it's really comfy and it's really relaxing and I thought no you need to do this you need to do that you need to bring your do you know what I did? I went and lay on the floor for 20 minutes oh. and listened to Katie and it was so bloody good. Yeah. And I'm experiencing more of not following that urgency, which is a feeling in me when it comes with urgency, do the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Hard to do. It's so yeah. challenging. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But that is, it's a game changer, isn't it? Just to realise that, that there's the choice and we don't, you know, I quite often call that, that voice in my head, the bully, because it's, 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 it feels like that. It feels like I have been dragged around by it for my whole life. Like it demanding that I do this or that or the other. And, um, I've heard Nicola Bird talk about it, the work, the work bitch, when it comes to work, it's like, no, you must get on with your work. You must do this. You must do that. Like, how dare you stop and have a cup of coffee? How dare you chat to somebody on the phone? You know, like, but just oh, yes. to, like you say, just to actually go, what do I want to do? What would feel good right now? Lying on the floor, yeah. right. Lying on the floor is then. <laughs> like, I don't have to listen to that. <laughs> yeah, it is. So cool. and, and you know, when you're like, I can feel I'm on the verge of insight with all of that stuff. There's something huge shifting in me and I can feel it. And I feel like I'm getting growing pains and, and I get a lot of, um, been experiencing a lot of physical pain lately mm -hmm. and I know for me that there's there's something around that with letting go letting go of the tension and everything that's on my shoulders and taking so much responsibility and and it's a tough one I'm figuring it out in my head because I love doing my work so much but I'm doing it and I've got all this tense feeling in me or this urgency and I'm like what's that all about because I do want to do it and, and it's, it's just such an exploration and, and again such a gift for me to what is my body telling me yeah I love that I love the being able to just stop and not go 
oh, my body's in pain, right, take some painkillers and carry on doing whatever I'm doing regardless. It's it's that kind of, okay, there's some pain or there's some discomfort or there's this uneasy feeling. Okay, let's just sit with that. Let's just be with it rather than trying to squash it, get rid of it at all costs and carry on regardless. Like, yeah, me too. I'm, that's like a real a place for me as well of, of learning and expansion, just stopping and, and actually listening. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I have to listen more now because, like, I haven't got the alcohol to numb it down, you know. So that that is that is what happens for me. I haven't got that something outside of me to turn to. So I kind of, if you like, I turn in and listen to me. Amazing. So that's pretty freeing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, I think that's a great place to stop because. You know what a if if anyone if people only take one thing out of this that is to stop and rather than follow the urgent desire or feeling or whatever, but to stop and just check in with your body, like that in itself is just such a game changer. Yes, it is. Oh, it was so lovely to have you. It was so lovely to see you, and I get to see you next week at your conference. Do you want to yeah. tell people a little bit about that and how people can find out more about you and all that jazz? Yeah, sure. So we, Deb and Beck, Deb's my auntie, Beck's my sister, and we run a conference here in North Devon um, where we share about the three principles. Uh, we've run it a few years. We had, we didn't run it last year because of um, COVID. You can find the conference on the Dare to Be You website, which is www.daretobeyou.co.uk. There are tickets available if you'd like to come next week for three days, hang out in a beautiful space, having more conversations like the one we've just had. And meet us both. And meet us both. <laughs> I can't wait to be there. Going out before then, but... <laughs> um. And then with my art, which I obviously didn't really get around to saying how that came after the alcohol went, but that's a whole other story for another day. But yeah. with my art, which kind of poured out of me once once the drinking stopped, um, you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook group, I Love Lucy's Art, and I hang out in there a lot. And I have a website, which is lucysheffieldart.co.uk. It's amazing I just think yes like you say that is a, that is we'll have to have you back to tell the story of the art because I I also want to know what that is and how that came about because I just see your stuff and you're so prolific I mean it's just like this flow of incredible creativity and beauty and yeah I'd love to know more about that so right that's another episode that I need to book in with you <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much lucy and i will see you next week yes take, take care. care bye